I, I, I love seeing the smile on our on, on the customer's face. Um, plants relax me doing what I do and seeing the results that we get and watching a plant grow from a seedling. This is The Producers. I'm Anthony Huckstep. After making a great connection with a local hydroponic farmer, former Sparky John Gunn fostered a real interest in this intensive kind of farming. When the opportunity arose to take over the farm at Coroiba Greens, he jumped in with both feet. We're a hydroponics farm um, based on um, Sunshine Coast, a little place called Coroiba, um, which is about 7 k's out of uh, Noosa Heads. Most people are familiar with Noosa. Um, we're a Queensland family operated business um, consistent, consisting of um, my lovely wife Kelly and myself. Um, we have other family members that work part time and help us out um, on the farm with seeding and planting. You know, we're good. We're based centrally. Um, two people, we're not too far from um, the main coast. We're approximately seven, eight kilometres, I suppose, from, uh, from the lovely North Shore, which most people would know the uh, access through to Fraser Island. So we're in a pretty lovely part of the world, to be quite honest. It's a pretty uh, nice paradise. John's fascination with growing vegetables began at a young age, thanks to the influence of his father, who grew all manner of things in the backyard. Yeah, I suppose um, when I was younger, um, you know, mum and dad, you know, I, I grew up in the 70s and the 80s. And um, back then, uh, we lived in, in, in Melbourne back then. Uh, we only were in a, in a uh, residential area, we weren't in a rural. Dad was from a, a, a rural area. He grew up in a farm as, uh, as a young child out in Victoria. So dad was right into growing food, growing plants. He, he, he captured every square inch he could of the backyard. And he taught us kids how to grow. He, he taught us how to feed ourselves off what we can grow in a backyard, even a small area. And I suppose every night, you know, we would eat and feed off our own produce. Um, Mum, you know, which was really great to see what you grew, the satisfaction of planting it, eating it. Yeah, it was really good. I, I firstly got into the food industry. I've been an electrical contractor for nearly 30 years. Um, down Melbourne, moved to the Sunshine Coast about 23 years ago. And I was servicing uh, quite a lot of people on the Sunshine Coast um, with um, doing solar and battery energy and all that type of thing. And, and I met a gentleman who um, was uh, growing a small hydroponics farm that he had uh, that wasn't all that far from me. And um, we became good friends. Um, over time, I, I was really interested in what he was doing. He took me under his wing and he educated me on how to grow food differently in an NFT system, which is the system that we um, that we grow with. Um, I'll explain that in a minute, um, what NFT is about and how it works. Um, but, yeah, so he sort of took me under the wing and, and, and educated me on it and gave me the opportunity when he went to retire to actually look at purchasing him his farm, um, he didn't want to give it to just anybody. He wanted somebody that could learn and, and know how to use the product. And, um, and we certainly have. I mean, I, I really enjoy it. We, you know, we, I've worked with him. He's now retired and he still now even still comes back to our farm to, to help us out. I don't think he could just let go, you know what I mean? NFT stands for Nutrient Film t um, Technique. So um, while all hydroponic systems sort of uh, offer an integral new way to grow plants, NFT... Uh, hydroponics is the only one that depends on a, a constant flow stream of uh, liquid to feed the plants um, with their roots dangling down and uh, dripping their toes basically like in a gentle uh, mountain stream. They, they have a 40 mil hole in a, in a 12 metre long channel that approximately has um, 50 holes through there. The, the plants are grown in um, a coca core product which is made and based from your coconut husks. Um, so it's a non-pathogen, meaning no bacteria contamination in the product. Um, we grow our seeds ourselves in, in our sheds and, um, and then place that into the NFT system once they uh, start to get their true leaf. Although it's a hydroponic farm, the weather plays a big role in the vegetables and herbs they produce. Yeah, I suppose weather conditions plays the biggest part. Um, with our hydroponics farm, when we first started it, um, I suppose the challenges we had was temperature. It, it can get quite intense. Um, the conditions can change quite radically with weather and storms and that sort of thing. So what we actually did is we decided to stack the farm. So instead of keeping the farm as a singular tray system, they're normally six rows wide, 12 metres long, we double stacked the farm and actually made um, one rack on top of the other. 
And what we found, yeah, what we found by doing that was it, the upper levels um, protected our lower herb products. So we tend to grow um, our spinach, we'll grow a lot of the coriander on the lower products. We're really susceptible to weather conditions and rain and all that type of stuff. Um, our output of product is um, really increased by doing that. Our losses of product have been very minimal. Um, and also the upper level plants, like your, your, red, your red oak and your green oak love the full sum. So they tend to protect their wider leaf. They tend to protect the plants on the lower level. Um, not only that, but your biggest, quite surprised with a lettuce like a salanova, where it's a, it looks like a flower, and it, it pretty much has a large um, cross-sectional area. So it captures like a radial dish. It captures the rainwater and actually feeds back into the plants, and um, yeah, and helps top our tanks up. So that's another another um, bio thing that we looked at when we we started growing is how can we be more sustainable with utilising the plants. Um, structure to actually also capture water to feed back onto itself. John is growing all manner of common leaves and greens, but more recently has begun to explore lesser known varieties. The beauty of what we do um, is it it brings everything that we need for what we grow. Um, some of the products um, we're growing, we're, we're growing quite a variety. We're a little bit different to most hydroponic farms um, where they'll tend to just stick to a lettuce or, or, or to a spinach. Um, I'll just um, tell you a few of the variety of green products. Um, we grow like green oak, um, red oak, um, cos, um, butter salinovas. We, we actually grow a fair bit of coriander, um, basil, and we also do a lot of baby spinach a leaf and also like red ruby um, spinach leaf, um, mizuna. Um, yeah, a couple of different products which we've found. We're, we're slightly different in, in I like to grow things that um, aren't always available to, to people, um, things like tatsoi. Um, we also do fenugreek. You know, they're, they're very unusual uh, unusual products, but um, the Indian community tends to use a lot of the fenugreek. It has, you know, great um, benefits um, f- that they use. Yeah. Hydroponics is just as labour intensive as conventional farming, but the average day and processes couldn't be more different. Yeah, I suppose um, a typical day uh, for us on the farm would be, you know, um, first thing early in the morning. We're always up pretty early as soon as the sun rises. Um, the most important thing, I suppose, with what we do in our farm is keeping the water flowing, making sure the pumps are operating properly. Um, we go down the back, we check our nutrient levels. Um, being an electrician has given me a lot of advantages, especially um, I've been involved in instrumentation for many years. And I've basically built this farm fully automated. Um, I've um, electrically built all my own control boxes and controllers. Um, it's remotely controlled from my phone. I can look at pH levels. I can look at acidity. I, I have auto doses set up um, on the system. We manufacture our own nutrient. So from A to B, right from the start, we do everything um, ourselves in-house um, with our product. Um, by doing all that and checking all, making sure everything's good, and then basically having a walk around the farm, that's the biggest thing, is walk around the farm. Um, much like most farmers, I walk their fence lines, I check their, their boundaries, their wires. I check for leaks. I mean, in hydroponics, it's always something leaking. It's not a hole in the hydroponics. It normally can be the plant. Um, the, the plant, you can have hoses might have come out, leaking pumps. There's lots of fine things. So we do a walk around. By that time, you're ready for a coffee. So um, we normally head back up to the shed. And um, in the shed, we, uh, we go into our grow room. We have our own um, sustainable grow room in there where we have all our babies and seedlings. Um, at any one time, we would have anywhere around six to 7,000 seedlings growing in, in coca core 40 mil pods at a time. Um, it's a big job seeding though, so every day is continuous seeding. My wife's fantastic. She's a great seeder. She's the backbone of the business, as most women are, to, the, to their husband's businesses. We're in partnership together and we work as partners and it's great. Um, we seed, we check the plants. My, what we have found, and, and people laugh at this, but we actually play music to our plants. So, uh, yeah, I know, people do love. And, and people go, How, we see it. You know, we actually get comments at the markets that people say, we can feel the music coming out of your plants. Well, it might sound silly, but 
by um, playing different certain frequencies, lower bass, high bass frequencies to plants stimulate what they get in the environment. Um, it actually does activate the plants. I've done my own trials. I, I found around a 25% growth rate in our seedlings simply by playing music through our, um, our, yeah, our system in our room. Um, I, I thought, to be quite honest, when, when I first heard about it, I did a bit of research and my wife said, no, we've got to give this a try. And we did. And um, it's a part of our day. And I tell you what, it's great because you're working in an environment, you've got beautiful, calming music. Um, we even go to the point of if it's raining outside, we actually play raining music inside uh, to, to the plant. Mostly piano music. Piano has such a, um, I'm actually musically, um, I, I'm actually a singer and play trumpet myself, but um, it, it's, it, the, the frequencies you find is generally piano. Piano tends to give you the best output, um, going from low basses to high. Um, we use generally um, YouTube is the best because it has so many different, you know, endless looping uh, songs in there. And um, my wife controls all that with a little iPad and I did all the electrics for her and set all the speakers up in there and she just wirelessly transmits that in the room and just constantly plays it. We don't play it all the time. Like, we'll play it when they wake up and we'll play it when it goes to sleep. But um, what we found is with the system that I installed with the monitoring, it, I have made it so it's all graph form. So I can see when the plants actually drink nutrients, when they don't drink. Um, and that is, so I can actually tell right on a bio when the plants are actually eating. I can see when they're, when they're happy and when they're not happy. And that's a big difference in farming. I'll probably go that miles far too far on most in farming, but we are so passionate about what we do. And it does reflect in our food for sure. It all started as a bartering system with other producers of the region, but after gaining a spot at local farmers markets, it changed their route to market. Yeah, so when we first initially um, brought the farm and, and set it up, it took a lot of time. There's a lot of hard work in setting a hydroponics farm up with the channeling and the concreting and the waters and the tanks. Um, and our neighbours started you know, oh, what are you doing? You know, what's happening? And they started coming in and we started growing and we we started feeding our neighbours, giving them, and they said, look, we'll swap eggs for your lettuce, you know, and this sort of thing started happening. Typical uh, rural community, you know, and um, and then it went from there. Everyone started saying, well, can we come and buy some lettuce off you? And then we started producing on Facebook and more and more people became aware um, we were given the opportunity with the gentleman that we took over the um, farm from had had a position at the both Noosa and Kiwana markets. So we were very, very fortunate to be able to pretty much step straight into a position he'd held there for 17 years. And that really helped. Um, it, it really got us into the marketplace. We were able to take our passion and our food and, and give it to people. And uh, we haven't really looked back. It's just been an incredible journey and it just continues every day. We um, display our product very good. Like um, we, sh it's, we show place what we grow and we get those results from people when they see it. Uh, we get people walking past and they go, oh, wow, look at that selling over. It looks like a flower. It just doesn't look real. It looks too good to eat. I mean, and we get these sorts of comments. Um, we started doing a loyalty program, I suppose, which really, really helped too. Look, much like you go to a coffee shop to get coffee, I, I took that initiative and put it into lettuce and said, well, we'll buy eight lettuces and you'll get your ninth one free. And pretty much that's taken off. And we've got hundreds and hundreds of customers each week at each market that have taken that card system up. And some of our customers now are, um, we've been at the markets now for about eight or nine months, and some of those customers are on their third and fourth free product. So um, it, it really shows. It, it's not only brings them back to what we do, um, but they are telling their friends and bringing you know, their parents and all sorts of stuff now. And we're doing multiple generations of customers through the one initial sale. It's great. John sells his product still live, enabling customers to take them home and let them continue to thrive on the kitchen bench for weeks after. It's easy to grow. You can grow anything, can it? but to take it out there and for people to see um, the results, um, I think I sent you some photos yourself. You would have seen the quality of the product that we're doing. It, it just glistens. It just, it, it just shows that it's loved and it's grown well. I think one of the key factors with our product is and different to just going to a supermarket and buying a lettuce is we, and it was one of our first goals was 
how can we make a product and send it to the customer where right up to the point of them picking that lettuce that it could be the freshest it could possibly be because there's always people say my lettuce never lasts if it's always in the bag in the fridge it always comes out sloppy and yuck well what we do with ours is we actually sell our product live we sell our product with the root store on the bottom with the pods that we grow um, we give it to the customer we explain to them look stick this in a little jar of water on your bench don't put it in the fridge our products can last weeks and weeks and weeks on the bench. Our customers pluck lettuces off and lettuce leaves off. And that's the difference with our, with our product is the, the longevity of it. Yes, we're probably doing ourselves out of business, but by doing that, we're building and trusting into that family and then they're just telling everybody. And that's where we're at at the moment is everyone's hearing the message, seeing the product, going, wow, that's different, looks pretty on your bench. Lettuce is normally in a fridge or coriander is normally in a fridge and it's actually still growing. Um, and I think, yeah, that, that, that's been the real key factor for us is actually taking the product live all the way to the customer. A presence at farmer's markets has opened the door to commercial kitchens and chefs are now seeing the benefits of John's labour. At first, we started off with the markets. Um, fresh um, chefs and my wife is connected also in the food industry and um and one of the key factors i suppose is that any chef um wants the the best quality local fresh produce they can possibly get to give either to their to their families or to their customer um and it's very hard to find that the farmers markets are ideal for that because um it's a center point for a lot of local chefs especially in noosa um we've got that many chefs it's hard to name them all but we get a lot of restaurateur chefs and and high and 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 chefs that are very well known from Hastings street you know all your top restaurants all the way through there that come to the farmer's market and 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 seek the products um i think one of the biggest things that we did um one of my wife's initiatives was to take our business to the next level um was being an electrician i had large sheds i had a lot of staff i had a large area and we had a lot of spare offices and stuff when we tapered things down and took on the um, farm pretty much full on. And so what we did with those rooms um, is we started growing um, product very well known more in America, your microgreen, which is your juvenile seedling um, grown to anywhere between 12 and 14 days before it gets its true leaf. And um, and it's become more of a decor, I suppose, in the past for chefs just to place it on the plate, finish it off uh, for, for the produce. Well, what we did with that is we actually started growing a multitude of all different types of microgreens from peas, sunflowers, mustard, mixed greens, radish, things like broccolini, and, um, and taking that, but actually doing the, exactly what we're doing with the lettuce. We actually grow it in a biodegradable tray. Um, we present that to the chefs. The chefs take that as a live product grown in Coca-Cola. Directly, it's food grade, so it can take us straight into the kitchen. It's at the final presentation point when the food goes out. They cut the product live, fresh. It doesn't get any fresher, straight onto the plate, and they absolutely love it, um, especially flavours like your mustards and, and on your steaks and, and, and your broccolini, um, sunflowers. We do actually getting into a large range of eatable flowers now, and we're getting those same chefs coming back getting... Um, you know, a range of eating flowers I just normally grow in the garden that I have. I have a lot of raised garden beds and, um, and that's become very popular as well. John has realised the more you eat and understand what you grow, the more it helps you focus on what to grow for the market. You've got to eat what you grow. You have to. You need to, you need to um, you know, experience what your customers are getting um, with your product. Um, I, it's made, I wasn't always, um, uh, well, microgreens for one, I, di- I didn't even know what a microgreen was before we started and, and it's been a real big initiative with my wife being in the food industry so, you know, that she knows what all this is and knows what the chefs require and the conditions in the kitchens and all this sort of stuff, which was well above my head as a sparky. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's sort of, um, it, it, you know, it's, it's been really good but, you um, Bringing that into our own kitchen, it's opened my flavours. Like it's just explodes in your mouth. Uh, different flavours of different food, and I suppose you know, not over like eating cooked foods. Like it's eating it raw stuff like tatsoi. You know, people 
your bok choy and all that has to be cooked. Your tatsoi can be eaten raw. And um, people think, oh, you eat tatsoi raw. And I go, yeah, it's absolutely incredible to eat it raw. Um, and their flavours and, and things that we we tell our customers and they try it. We, and they actually pull leaves off on the plants. We say, look, pull a leaf off or we'll catch a bit of a microwave taste this. And it just explodes in their mouth. They go, wow, this is incredible. Now with a sustainable and successful model, John's focus is on education and he's also looking at value-added products too. Being in business for myself for a long, long time, I have a lot of experience in the marketing side of things and I think sustainability has been the biggest thing. Um, We want to educate people. I I have the room here to do it. We want to start running out sustainability courses um, from our farm bringing people to the farm, I can educate them on energy, solar, power, self-sufficiency and how to grow food and live off it. Um, and, and that's one of the biggest passions now, I suppose, I've, I've got is to educate people. Um, the other thing is um, with our byproducts, sometimes um, our coriander might be slightly uh, soil damaged from a rain or something like that. I'm very, very particular on what I will send out to the customers and to the marketplace if it doesn't meet the standards. So what we tend to do with that product is we don't throw it out, we don't compost it, we actually dehydrate it. So we start dehydrating coriander and um, broccolini in, uh, into dehydrators. And my next goal is to really increase our microgreen side of things on a commercial side larger to start dehydrating and powderising our product into a powder product being able to provide that to chefs and people who want to you know, give their kids veggies in, in, in a spoon, in a glass, and they know they're not even eating something like a vegetable, you know what I mean? That's pretty much the next step. Um, it's going to take a bit, but that's my vision um, and my wife's vision, and, um, yeah, hopefully we, we can succeed. Coroiba Greens is setting a new benchmark in small-scale sustainable hydroponic farming in Australia. But for the guns, it seems like they're only just getting started. This is The Producers, a Deep in the Weeds production. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we share the stories of producers, farmers, makers and growers, the true lifeblood of the food industry. Follow us on Instagram at Producers Podcast or email us at producerspodcast at deepintheweeds.com.au.